We'll call the meeting to order again. Uh, it is 7.03. Uh, one of the town government study committee. Uh, the meeting is virtual. All, all votes will be taken via roll call. And in attendance, we have Harriet Davis, Kirsten Alexander, Deirdre Parati, Roger Smurge, Dave Anderson, and our recording secretary, Catherine Tinsley. Um, the first order of business is public comment and Mike has just arrived. Mike Lucy is here as well. Hi, Mike. Hi there. And we're in public comment period right now and there is no public. Close the public comment period. Um, review and approve minutes from the 12-16 meeting. Um, I believe I sent those out. I hope I did. I was looking for them. I didn't see them. I have them. They look fine to me. Just want to make sure that I did send them. Yeah, you did. They yeah. were attached to an email yesterday, I believe. Oh, yes. Ah. Yes. Um, do we have any edits? Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Harriet. Yes. Kirsten? Yes. Deirdre? Yes. Roger? Yes. Dave? Hi. Mike? Oh, no, yes as well. So minutes are approved. Uh, next up is continue the deliberation. Um, I was able to get a copy of the interim report for the 2012 Government Study Committee, and I did put it online. Um, so I, I suggest that we append that to the final report um, as a, a, an addendum. So I, um, one thing, Patrick, I, I did not realize that you had located that and added it. So when we get to uh, that portion of the <clears throat> draft report that discusses it, we can, if that section stays in, make the necessary revision. Yep, sounds good. Um, So we have deliberations to continue or do we want to go right to the, um, the final report draft? Oh, Paul is here as well. Welcome, Paul. I think we could pretty much go to the draft. And, um, I think we've hashed through the, the arguments pretty uh, thoroughly. Um, so you, I can put the draft up on the shared screen. People see that? Yes. Good. Good. Page breaks are a little strange. It looks like I, I don't know if I did that. No, that that's got to be a um, well, unless someone was editing the document uh, on Google Drive, that would be a conversion issue from Word to Google Drive. Uh, okay. I when I did uh, the, my last edits on it today in Word, all the formatting should have been in pretty good shape. So okay. um, if there are if there continue to be formatting issues after we make changes tonight, what I will do is 
take the document back down from Google Drive, do the formatting in Word, because Google Drive is great for a lot of things. Formatting is not one of them. Yeah. So how are we gonna make edits in this format? Or, I mean, are we able to? I guess so, yeah. We, we are able to, I mean, I, I, we um, text editing, uh, definitely. Okay. Um, but I, I don't know if we want to change. I had some some formatting um, ideas just to um, have page breaks. So the my majority report starts on a fresh fresh page. The minority um, majority recommendation starts on a fresh page. Minority on a fresh page, and then the additional observations on a fresh page, um, just so that it, it's clear what each section is. Yes. That's something that can be that's something that can be done outside of this right the only issue with that patrick is sometimes if a section you know carries over to the top of a page and only has two lines then you run the risk of a majority big blank page um and, and sometimes that can imply that content went missing or things like that so just from an you know uh editing standpoint or presentation standpoint um, i don't know if we <clears throat> uh, that's just maybe, my well maybe maybe it's just make it uh bigger and bolder the the report header something that makes uh, i i thought it kind of blended in a little much okay um, yeah headers bigger headers that that can always do it or yeah. or a different color or something like that yeah <laughs> So did you have in mind line by line editing or a, a process of contributions of suggestions uh, after this? Because we're not going to sit around here till midnight doing this damn thing. <laughs> so, um, I, I had just a, a, a couple things. Um, and then it's not uh, nothing huge. It just uh, when I, well, one, uh, on the minority recommendation, um, Paul, you're listed as a as a voting member, and and you're obviously not. No. Um, so I, I would not I would not list the ex officio members. Um, as what on, page are you? What page and, are you on, Patrick? Pat, Patrick, I I did not um, when I carried it over. Uh, I did not list any of. Uh, the individual members in in the section. Um, okay. So and uh, that uh, I have two points tonight on the threshold issues. That's the second one, and might as well deal with it. Uh, I would like everybody identified because we were publicly identified when we put our hands up about the straw poll. So Mike, so that if, if if you are the majority, you should be listed, and if you are the minority, you should be listed. By name. Patrick, can you go up to the summary of recommendations section? Yes. Right there. Yep. So, so that's where we will uh, do that, Mike. So and those yellows are where names are going to go in? Once we have, that's the, oh, once we've done a final vote. Yep. Very so good. I'm going to, I'm going to amend, um, the agenda for our next meeting to add the, the final vote. So that's when we'll take, so what we took before was a straw poll. Yep. And then we'll take the final, I, I didn't put it in the next agenda, but I will I will add that to the next agenda. We're gonna take the final vote and that those names will be uh, inserted. Right. There. But recognizing that we took the straw vote, that's fine. But at the same time, since then, a couple of months worth, there's a lot of drafting and work on wording, et cetera that have been done on the one hand by Pat and your colleagues, and on the other hand, Harriet and I, um, and you know, just seems like identify it. So that was the second of two, but a more threshold issue, uh, absolute threshold issue for me is uh, page 11, 12, and the top of 13, where you have this majority responses to minority opinion for remaining with a board of three which is sort of like trying to uh, just before the minority recommendation even appears, 
just crap all over it. Um, Harriet, I think I can speak for Harriet, but I'll certainly speak for myself. I'd like this section completely removed. You make your points about what a glorious day it'll be with five selectmen. We will respectfully make the point that remaining with three is a good idea, but you don't have to piss all over us before we even say anything. It's really outrageous. Can I respond to that first of all? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so one, I, I, I do agree with actually restating the names in the sections, because I'd actually like to see the author names under where it says majority recommendation and minority recommendation. So it's clear that, that those specific people wrote those sections, because I think it gets confusing. And then at the end, it switches back to additional observations, which then I think it should say full committee. So it's very clear where it's a full committee section and then where it's not. So I agree with yep. that. Point. Identification so, is just fine. Thank you. Right. So I, I, I would like to see additional identification beyond even what you were saying in the first section. Um, so I thought that we had agreed that we were going to respond to each other's sections. So that's number one, why that section is there. I agree with you about the order that it should actually follow the minority. Um, recommendation because it shouldn't come before, but that's because I wrote it all in one document and it just was put in. So I don't have an issue with that, but I was under the impression that we agreed we were going to respond to each other's sections and that's why that section is there. And I do have an issue, particularly with number four, because there are statements in the minority recommendation saying that the data is skewed and lumped together, and that is not true. And I think- Okay, but wait a minute, Deirdre. Um, well, hold on, Harry, can I finish the thought? I, I think that that needs to be pointed out, that that's not accurate. And I think- Here's, a, mean, here's a suggestion. Hold on, hold on. If you're, maybe you're gonna say this, but let me finish. No, make it a footnote to- uh, the, Paul's footnote or whatever the hell it was. Well, yeah, Roger had formatted that comment as a footnote, but I would say if you consider removing that, then we can remove sec number four, at least. Oh, well, <laughs> each and every one of these things is inappropriate and out of place. And if they're not removed, um, it's over as far as I'm concerned. Right, well, me too. I, I'm I not perfectly to willing negotiate. to leave the meeting right now and take my own and and Mike's minority report to the selectmen ourselves because this oh. is disingenuous. This is inappropriate. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. So number one, uh, Harry, and and, and mm -hmm. you're referencing um, at our last meeting. And it's still in the minority report. I mean, there's reference to, to data that, that we didn't collect and we did not see and we did not discuss. And there is, again, in here, it's saying that everything was lumped together. And, and that is absolutely not true. If you read the report, things are broken down. What was public? What was the general public? What was the, uh, the boards and committees? But it, here you, you do say, um, or is it? Uh... Patrick, if I could just ma make one point and then maybe I will just leave. I think the introduction is well done. Introduction, the charge, why we're here, and to say that we essentially divide it into two groups. We have a, we we're calling it a majority report because it is um, signed, if you will, by the majority of the members. We also have a minority report. And here it is. And let's not cross pollinate and call each other um, liars or whatever, more polite versions of that. That's beneath us to do that kind. We should not be doing this. Okay. This is stacking the deck and it's inappropriate. And I will not be a party to it. And make, I don't make think your I'm make your positive case. Put your exactly. pen down. Let listen to the other side's positive case, not pissing on each other and let it go. Right. Like, that's fine if you are going to not take shots at the data, which you were part of that process. So the footnote is a problem. Um, make, I, I make wanna, a foot, I, go, go ahead. Let me just make a point about the data. 
um, in, in my opinion, as an observer, we began in good faith, the whole group, uh, to try to assemble a bunch of data. I personally came to this with the view that all the issues that needed to be thought about were already existing out there in the other towns and reports. You know, and we had the example of Hamilton right next door to look at and decide what we thought about it. But we, um, uh, the majority group felt that it was necessary to do a lot of sort of first uh, or primary source material work. And, and so that was done. At, 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 and in my opinion, and I don't purport to have carefully read every, every instance that came in, it was kind of a jump ball. I felt from the beginning, this was a jump ball case. It, it depends on sort of what your personal philosophies are as a voter, but I don't think there's a strong case. Either side can extinguish the strength or the validity of the opposite position. Um, but what I guess my perception was that those who were looking for a more of a groundswell of support for five amongst the older experienced people interviewed initially was, well, we got to go find some other people to get on our side. And so I shifted from thinking that the goal here was an objective study of this to one in which uh, the proponents of five were trying to make a case. And, 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 and I tend to agree that the the response to the minority report is, it does seem a bit too much to me uh, because if this is a hand in hand, we're all going to do this and we come forward and we say, we agree to disagree about what we think is the best outcome, but we respect each other's positions. Um, and, and so I, I feel in this case, it's gone into the point where uh, the proponents of five have said, in effect, we're gonna squash the minority report, not just we're going to make a pitch to the town that, mm -hmm. that we think five is better because, but we're going to try to squash any possible argument that could be made against us. And, and I, I, that just strikes me as the wrong approach to this. I mean, it is what you do if you're trying to do an insurgency government, but um, it, it's, it's not <laughs> consistent with right. when in practice. So anyway, I apologize for sermonizing, but that's, that's how I see it. <clears throat> um, are you a Roger, he has his hand up for a long time. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I have to take issue with what Paul just said. We as a committee all agreed on the process we would utilize, including doing independent new investigation. Yes, we took other towns reports into consideration, but no one on this committee, Paul, I think yourself included, ever objected to going out and interviewing other select board members, both from former Wenham select board and from other towns. No one objected to going out and talking to other town administrators. No one objected to doing uh, a survey of uh, Wenham board members and committee members. That was all agreed upon process. So I agree, I agree with that. Uh, I know, so to I suggest know. Paul that that was somehow the rigging of a majority. That's not when the rigging occurred, Roger. Uh, well, that's that's certainly what your comments just now sounded like. So, no, it's it's frankly, it, in, in my view, if you read all that data that came in, you know, it's 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 not a clear mandate, which is why there are, five. which is why I think we have a divided recommendation, and each side is stating their case, and I think that it is fair for each side. And look, I'm abstaining. Uh, you know, I, I've said the reasons why. I, I've offered my thoughts to the committee as a whole on how to approach this process. There's nothing wrong with making counter argument. I would hope that both sides do so in a respectful manner. And I think on both sides, there are some parts of the recommendations that approach that line. Um, I had, I believe, at, I don't know if it was the last meeting or meeting before recommended to or suggested to the authors of both sides to take a really close look at what you were writing. And I think we as a committee said we wanted this to be a uh, respectful and uh, well-based report. Um, it doesn't seem like many edits in that vein were made. Um, so that that's anyway let, let me just let me the just process here the process here was a was one that we all agreed upon 
I want, I want to, let me just agree with you. Up to the point that you summarized the process, I totally agree. Everybody I'm not talking about the report, Paul. I'm not talking about no, the No, I'm talking report. about the data cut process. Yeah, and and my uh, uh, my concern really was this. I, and as I said, I came into this with a feeling that there was a lot of expertise out there and you simply had to decide wh which of those arguments persuaded you now. And there were the people on the committee and they'd look at all the issues and there they were, and it would have only taken three months. Um, but... Um, the, um, uh, in, in fact, um, I think, and therefore, I felt that all the people in the categories you mentioned were people who were qualified with expertise uh, and experience in these issues, and therefore were the credible people to ask, in the same way that it is credible to ask Hamilton or other towns which have gone to five, how did it go? Why did you do it? All this sort of stuff. So all that sort of stuff, I totally agree with that. It's when, it's when, and it may be my fault for not having tried to make a point, but it's not my vote anyway. Uh, when we said, he said, well, uh, it looks like uh, it's kind of a close case one way or the other. Let's go do a bunch of man on the street interviews. That's the piece. That's where I lost agreement. What man on the street interviews. Well, I mean, the answer is you set up a booth on a, on a street yard sale in on railroad Avenue or whatever to get, people to fill out. No, I mean, that's my not... point is this, I, I, I accept the fact that lots of good people acting in good faith arrive at, at whatever opinions they want. I happen to be a person who believes in, in expertise. If the expertise is rotten, and that's basically your, your, uh, uh, your, your position, then you want to throw it all out. And, and that's fine. It's, it's, uh, as I say, I think, I, I think that the Issues can be dispassionately put to the voters. I, over my years as moderator, I end up with a huge respect for the sensibility of the, of the moderates. People come in hot on the collar on both sides and pretty much generally the voters sort it out. And if the pros and con issues that are kind of, in my view, well-established are set forth, uh, then, then the voters will make a choice. And I don't think this is a case of trying to convince them of one thing or another, but I, I, I understand that that the majority believes passionately that this is the right course and you want to try to make your case. So I, I, I'm just, you know, just explaining my somewhat contrary position. Thank you for listening. Um, uh, Kirsten, go ahead. Um, so as someone who came in to the process later, I explained this in a, the last meeting, I don't think Paul and Mike were there. Um, this paragraph, advice of former Wenham selectmen, I thought this paragraph was going to change more because Harriet, you, I was very confused because the data was different than what our data collection showed. And Harriet explained that she, that was her personal research that wasn't submitted as part of the overall data. So that meant I had no way to consider that data as part of my decision-making process. Um, and it's also confusing to the reader to go, well, wait, this is different than what the actual data, which I can read uh, on the website uh, says and what's in the data report. Um, so that's problematic. Um, in terms of collecting public information, I was part of that process. I was there on Railroad Ave. Patrick had a card made up where people could fill out the survey online. It wasn't collected on site. And um, we did not get enough data from the public to consider that as part of the data uh, analysis. It was all people who are on committees, boards, and former select people, et cetera. So that was the only data that was considered as people who are essentially insiders into the process of governing within Wenham or who have been in the past. So I don't know how you get a better group of people. We had a pretty large percentage of people respond to that survey. So I don't have any problem with that. What I do have a problem with is anonymous data that I cannot confirm or at all because I wasn't there. Nobody else has it written down. It's not in the um, report. So I, I think it has to be clarified where that information is coming from. And I, I do believe that when we went to the uh, boards and committees, we had discussed that early on, 
and said, these are the people that are going to, if we, if we expand the board, these are the people who are most likely going to step into those seats. So we want to hear from these people. And I do want to hear from the, from Joe public. I, when you speak against uh, talking to the public, you're speaking against town meeting as well. We don't, we're not a representative town meeting. We are an open town meeting. I want to know what people say. I, I, I do want to know, you know, what are the concerns of the people? That's why we had a public forum. That's why we're going to have another public forum. Um, that's why we had a public forum with the CPC. I, we want to know what people want. Uh, so I, I do take issue with, with discounting the non-insiders. And all I need to do is look back at the government study committee that was done in 2012. We have the interim report. How many people were polled? Eight eight that's not a, a broad enough sample i don't think i'm not looking for just the the elite few i i want personally i want to know what what the people want and 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 the people that are most likely going to run for these seats so to to discount the the, the man on the street or the woman on the street i, I just um I, I don't agree at all um go ahead Deirdre. patrick we weren't <laughs> I don't think it was suggested. I don't think the selectman thought we were going to do a big data project and act on the data. I think well, they picked well, us. Well, if, if we want to talk about what the selectman wanted, the selectman wanted to form two committees. They wanted me to form a committee and they wanted to form a committee that was the anti Pat Waddell committee. And that is on record on, on that Zoom. You can go back and look at it. That's what the selectman wanted. That's not what they got. But once this committee was formed, it was up to us to to um, do the research as we saw fit. Um, so I, we, we I think we, we need to come up with our reports and we don't need to bury them in verbiage. I think we should, as I said a few minutes ago, have an introduction. We, we came up with, we did a lot of data collection, a lot of conversations, a lot of surveys. On the basis of those, we came to these conclusions. Five people went on the uh, majority report to go to five. Two went to the minority report to stay at, at three. And here are their reports, fairly succinct. That's what the selectmen would like to see is what the towns want to see. They don't want to see this nibbling and quibbling over, well, I don't think she did it right, or you know, uh, she didn't report her data. Or this is this is incorrect. Fighting within the committee is ridiculous, and it, it really diminishes all of us. I think all of that should be taken out. So, so well, number one, <laughs> not, uh, Deirdre, I get two seconds. Number go one, ahead, go ahead. The, the straw poll was four two one. So, uh, four in the majority, two in the minority, and one abstaining. Uh, it wasn't five two. Just a point of clarity. Um, go ahead, Deirdre. No, that's fine. Uh, now there's too many things to respond to at this point. Harriet, I agree with you. This is not a good look for the committee. And this really is not how we should be wrapping up. But to turn around at the end of a process and try to dismiss the entire process that we all agreed upon. I didn't say you, that. I didn't uh, say that. Okay, I so didn't Harriet, say that. You keep, you keep cutting no, it off. I said you're not going to explain it to the general public. And the general public is literate and they can read a report, okay? The data, and, and I'm gonna go back to Paul's comment about, and I agree with what Patrick said, that we should be interested, and some of us are interested in what the public thinks. And there was a public survey and it is mentioned. However, it is not lumped together. And I guess one thing I'd like to know is if the three of you have actually read the data section, because it is written, clearly delineated which group said what and how many said what, okay? The survey was sent to, as Kirsten and Patrick were saying, people who are part of Wenham town government, the most informed people who work at town hall, who are on boards and committees. And to say that that is irrelevant or that's the man on the street at this point in time is disingenuous. It's not true. We, 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 we will debate this all night. Why don't you just double asterisk the asterisk footnote and you can have a little data duel down at the bottom of page 14. My well, issue is okay. much broader. How in the hell do we get 
a report that has the majority recommendation going on for five pages. And I must compliment you, very good stuff, very good stuff. There's about 83 arguments for five. I may be persuaded myself in May, who the hell knows? But in the meantime, you present it, then you pour the you know, poison in the pool, page 11, 12, 13. Oh, before you even, now that you've enjoyed our magnum opus, but even before you read the other side's views, <laughs> let us uh, pollute them with these uh, big four things that just uh, are scandalous. Okay. Leave that so crap out, sell your own story positively. Let us sell ours positively. If there's a doodah about this data, double asterisk it. And then for God's sakes, just summarize it and let's end this crap. Okay. So this is false. I mean, the advice of former women when, when I'm selecting, that, that paragraph is false. Previous select board members recommended staying with, some did, yes, but not all. And then- um, Sell your own several, story, Roger. Patrick several town of, former town administrators, but not all, we had two out of three say go to five. So this this is this is not line up with the data, and then they all, who's all? You're you're saying it like it's a like it's a one group of people, but we know that what was it? Um, the the select the select board members were split. They were in favor of staying with three, but they were split. We know that the town administrators were split as well, but they were in favor of moving to five. This makes it sound like you know a voting block that's moving in lockstep it's not it, it, you know and they all that you're implying there that everyone agrees and it, that's okay. not true what are we going to do with this i mean you have a, a six or seven page majority recommendation well crafted my compliments etc enjoy it go sell it leave ours the hell alone and let it sell itself or not you're probably going to end up with you know, if I was a betting man, by June, July 1, the next fiscal year, Wenham's going to be on the way through the state legislature to get five. Hope you're happy. But in the meantime, let's not get all stuck on this crap. Patrick, right. he's waiting. Dave's been waiting patiently. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Dave, go ahead, please. Um. I. I have a couple of points. One is we've been going at this for a year now. And uh, when I threw my hat in the ring, I didn't know that we'd be meeting at times once a week or more. Uh, I'll put down my violin in a minute, but my wife's come to me a number of times and been like, what are you doing that's missing bedtime, book time with my kids? And I'm like, look, we live in this community and we need to participate in this. And I'm with a really good group of folks who are thinking about this sincerely. And I've said that to this very point, I probably missed 26 bedtimes, right? And you all have too. There's other things you could have done as well. And I've meant it sincerely until this moment. I mean, the concept that after all of this, we would walk away from this, anyone would walk away from this because, you know, it's like, look, let's talk about how to resolve this. Let's not talk about taking our marbles and going home. I mean, that's just not right. We've, we've worked as hard as any committee short of the select board on this over the past year. So I would just encourage everybody to stick with it and try and find a way. Now, you know, I think our pers my perspective on this, first of all, Mike, I just want to say that, you know, this is the first time that the report has come together, literally came together an hour ago. I get your point about the minority the majority response to minority, but this concept that there was intentionality, somehow it was going to come out as, you know, this dump on the minority immediately before the minority. We've never seen it formatted like this. So I think that's a very fine perspective to bring. Hey, look, guys, I don't think this is fair. You know, we want to make our argument before you make your argument. So let's take that into consideration and work around that, because I actually agree. I agree. It, it, we, we're no, I don't think it, it does you any service to preempt it. I don't even think it does us a service to preempt it because people get to that. They're like, what are they even talking about? I haven't even read the minority yet. Right. I will Bingo. say this, though. Uh, you know, I have not commented 
on the minority's recommendation at all, except for the footnote where there was a shot at our data, because like Roger said, I felt like, look, we were all in this together night after night after night after night. And to basically say that oh, it was a it was a flawed methodology. I take a little bit personally. I'm trying not to because we were all here together and we all worked together and there was a lot of votes along the way. But anyhow, I don't care if that's the, where it comes out from the minority. So be it. If you all want to draw a picture of Garfield, I don't care what you do in that section. OK, just like we're going to do whatever we're going to do in the majority. That's the way it's got to be. Now, what I raised before, which is a very standard practice, is you do opinion, opinion, counterpoint, counterpoint. You know, it's like we present ours, you present yours, we present our response to yours, you present your response to ours. I mean, that's a very standard way to have a dialogue, in my opinion, about a very important issue. And so I don't think there's anything inappropriate about one side responding to the other side's argument. I would actually invite you all to write a response. I, I will uh, exceed my scope and preempt your argument, which is I don't have time to write a response to eight pages. You know, hey, that's up to you all. The point has always been to deliver to the public well-reasoned arguments in favor and against going to a five-member board. We've been working a lot of nights mm -hmm. over the past year. We are at the finish line, you know, and, and, and the cruel joke here is that at the end of the day, the select board may throw this in the trash can. I mean, you know, so I would just say, if, if the sticking point here is, hey, majority, could you just move your response after ours so that you don't preempt ours. My guess is that the majority would be open to that. And I would encourage if that's what we need to do to move this along, let's do it. If the thing is, hey, cut it out or we're taking our marbles and going home. I'm like, is that really how it's got to be after a year of all these nights? That just seems to me to be a little bit too dramatic. And, and, and frankly, in bad faith, we've worked really hard collectively. And I think we've been respectful to one another. And I think we deserve to deliver the select board, a product, presents well-reasoned arguments. And now I'll stop after I make one last point. I just read through the five points of the majority response to the minority. There's not a single sentence that I see in there where there's a personal attack or even references, hey, you know, the majority's, you know, telling a lie, anything like that. It's, again, it's on the arguments. And I would just encourage it grapple with the arguments as opposed to saying like this is in bad faith because i really don't think it is thanks for letting me share so i would be in agreement with uh with dave to to move the the counterpoints to after the minority report i think that's a that's a good suggestion and also encourage the minority to to come up with their own counterpoints um I would even, sorry, and, and now I'm going to take the mic back. I don't speak for any of the majority, but I'll just throw it out there. I would put a, I would footnote it. You want to, you want to, you want to make them, we can even minimize and put them down a footnote at the end, you know, put a footnote at the end of the minority report and say, these are the majority's rebuttals to that. I would be open to that as well. Well, speaking from, for myself first, uh, I, I think I can live with that. I just uh, objected totally to the preemption of it being ahead of any uh, opportunity for the public to read the minority's view. If, if you put, come in behind and we have the option to rebut that rebuttal, uh, what the heck, that seems relatively reasonable. And, and Mike, that, that was the whole point of putting this all together in a full package so that we can see how it all comes together because we were you the two sides were all working on different yep. documents because by necessity so that's why we're having this part of tonight's meeting is to see how it all comes together and see what adjustments need to be made um i i think i i think that the suggestion of having a recommendation recommendation response response right. it perfectly a, a good one and each side can continue to fine tune things right up until you know we're you know delivering this to the select board 
you know, I, I, I think we're not at a point tonight where we're going to vote to publish the draft report, um, which needs a little more work. It needs a little bit more work. Absolutely. And we can talk about that when we get to scheduling. Um, because we have another point, if I could make about this document, what is the purpose of it? We're going to give it to the selectmen and then they will decide whether or not to put a motion either for or against or both on the warrant. Is that not correct? Well, I believe we will present the document as a committee to the select board. Uh, it was intended to be on the January 18th agenda. Uh, and I would encourage all members to attend and I would ask- I know, but that's the document. I mean, look, I've been a selectman and I said this before and people weren't too happy when I said it. This is too long a document for the selectmen to read. This will be one of probably a dozen items they'll have to address on the 18th. Seems to me we do better for each case to be made. And if you want to have a summary at the end, as, as Mike said, after we've had our say, and you want to go back and forth, okay. But it's too complicated. It's I, not going to go anywhere. It's going to end up at, uh, in the bottom of somebody's file. And it, then what are we going to do? Publish it for town meeting? It, people, the, the town, townspeople will have access to this. They already have access to it. Uh, so yes, this is a public document. And this, this is a document to, to state the arguments, to state the, what we did and the arguments for, the arguments against to the select board. Yes, I do expect them to read it. Yes, if you want to be on the select board, Yes, you're going to have some homework. I, I, I don't think we need to, to boil it down to a one page. I think that what the, the arguments that are made here are valid and, and they deserve to be, to be vetted um, to the select board. And then let them, let them make a decision on whether to proceed to the warrant. Uh, the problem with the warrant is that as of right now, the warrant closing date is February 4th. I haven't seen it getting pushed back which puts us under a really tight deadline because we're, we're scheduled to have a public hearing, a public forum on the 12th, and then a meeting after to finalize this document and then get on the uh, January 18th agenda. So we, we are under a really tight deadline here. The can select can thought, always can open the warrant again we and cannot. add something. We cannot. We no, but cannot. they could. They could, but, but that, we don't have that power. That that's, right. that's the select board. Uh, I agree, ahead, Roger. Um, I know this is in contravention of the process that we've previously contemplated, but it's in mind of the fact that we've had two public information sessions, both of which were rather sparsely attended. One option, given the timing, is do we forego uh, a public information session? on a draft report, proceed with publishing the draft, making it available, putting on the public uh, on, a, you know, on uh, agenda for our hearing, uh, our meeting after that we're discussing the report, just like we've been doing this whole time, um, and focus on getting this to the select board in time. Um, it's just an option. It's just something for us as a committee to consider. I think that makes sense. I think that uh, it should be highlighted on the front page of the Wenham Town uh, website. Uh, you know that column down the left-hand side with the highlights of what's going on. Boom, here's the report, it's out. Uh, tap right here and you can get yourself a copy. And we focus on uh, the, the process with the selectmen, which is uh, essentially the 18th, right? We, we need we need to meet with them then in order for this product to fit into its pathway with the warrant article. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, and I think that that makes sense. I just, I, I do like to involve the public, but I, I do feel that. Um, well, when it goes public well before the 18th, right? Before the meeting with the selectmen, it, be, it needs to be on the Wenham website a week a week before, isn't that doable? 
I, I don't like to commit staff time just because staff is so thin right now. So we had another resignation in town hall. Uh, we know our treasurer has left and now Ryan is also leaving. So town hall is thinner. Yep. Staffing is thinner than it was before. So I, I, getting things on the website may be a little more difficult than, uh, than it was previously. Um, okay. So I, I, I agree, it would be great to, to put it out there, but I just, I don't know what the bandwidth is uh, inside town hall. I, we're running really, we're running dangerously thin. Um, but I, as far as the, the public forum, I, I like people to have the opportunity but uh, it's rare that you actually do get much public um, interested and, and engaged. So in order, in order to have a better report, I, I think we could use the 12th in the, uh, uh, probably a better manner than to have a public forum. And I make that suggestion, Patrick, with the hope that there will be an ultimate public forum on the issue over which I preside in April. Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes. And uh, I just want to say something, Patrick. I totally agree with you that people should read this kind of stuff. And, and I commend the majority for the meticulousness with which you built your case. My frustration over 28 years as a town moderator was I felt we were lucky if we could get them to read the warrant book, let right. alone anything in the back of the warrant book. So uh, just uh, so in that sense, I sort of have a, a slightly different perspective for reiterating Harriet's point that many times less is more. What you need is a, is a one page, two page uh, uh, thing. And, and, you know, the, as you say, all the information is available for those who have the patience and the interest to dig into it. But fundamentally, you want to make sure that people walk in the door with some idea of why three, why five. I mean, in, in my view, it's as simple as that. Uh, yep. And uh, so I, I think it, it, it runs the risk of being buried in the data, frankly. That's why God invented executive summaries. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we're also, going to we're also going to present this to the select board. So there will be an agenda item and we will, you know, assuming that there's only three people, right? As of right now, there's only three people. Three people need to read an 18 page document. And I, I don't think that's a too heavy a lift. Um, mm -hmm. And then the discussion will actually be more informative, I believe, than um, the document. I, I did also draft in an executive summary uh, based on our prior discussion. So there is now an executive summary in this document for the committee's consideration. Uh, so, Kirsten, I, I, Kirsten, I've seen yeah. him <laughs> numerous times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just as an editor, um, I agree that the formatting is confusing. It's kind of confusing where the majority report ends or where, you know, where the, re not reports, the- Recommendations. Uh, recommendations and, and other things start. The executive summary should probably come before the introduction, you know, that kind of stuff. I think with headers, we can be a little more clear about what's going on. And I agree on expanding out the executive summary section. So that's, my hope is to work on that to make it the flow uh, compelling to the public. And, um, you know, I think everything everybody said tonight around that is, is perfect. So once that's done, I think it's going to make a lot more sense to people like different size headers, that sort of stuff will, yeah. will really help with the understanding where you are in the document. And we just haven't had the time to make everything consistent until we're, because we're just getting it now. So. And, and, you know, instead of words like is false, might say might be in error, you know, just soften it a bit. We're, we're in this together yeah. and working like Roger and David said for well, months. Right. So that, that particular one is because, and we clarified that in the last meeting that Harriet was working with a different set of data. So when you apply it to the data that is public that everyone can see, it is false. But can, for Harriet's purposes in that world, it was true, but I didn't know that. And yep. so it was really confusing because I'm like, we're saying two completely different things about the same data, but the reason was is because it was not the same data. 
So, that, also, you know, also anyway, I've always thought, I always found that, you know, a statement that says, quote, may be an error, unquote, is easier to take than that's false. Yeah, or it's, I mean, we can clarify that it's based on different data, but I think that was, the, I thought that that was going to be reflected in the minority recommendation, but it isn't. And you guys can also make that reflective. Where, I mean, where it says it's false is where it says the data is lumped in together. That right. was the point of contention. Exactly. Because Deirdre was very careful to say where each piece of data was coming from. And I believe there's one line that says we had a public survey, only 22 responses, 67% of those 22 were in favor of five. But that's the only, that's the only time that that data is taken into account, really. Okay. So to say it's all the data is lumped in, you're, it, you're poisoning the data set. So the, one leads to the other. So if we right. went back and changed. Again, I, as a member of the majority, I, I don't want to touch the minority report. Um, but here where it says uh, the minority recommendation states the data in this report is skewed and lumped together. That comes in the, foot, the footnote. Um, and you'll see it here. Uh, in the footnote, um, the majority report lumped in together responses from the general public and those from experienced former select board members. So that that's the point of contention right there, I believe. Um, yeah, so Mike, if that if, if you can consider removing that, then we can take out number four. I'm not what as close that? to that point. Um, it, Paul or Harriet, do you have any observation? Wait a minute, say that again. Take out exactly what? The comment. The footnote, the footnote in number four, yeah. go. Yep, so the footnote on page 14. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me get it. Page 14. It's oh, about the, the, it's the data do the issue. Wait a minute, page 14. Okay, page 14, right? You see the footnote that starts with the data? No, there's not a footnote on that page. That's uh, it, it just may be a formatting issue. So All right. All right, is this a number 13? <clears throat> footnote number seven. Footnote number seven, yes. Which on most of us appears on page 14. I don't have much on 14. Oh, wait a minute. No, we don't. Uh, yeah, here's 14. I don't, I don't, um, mine must have printed up differently. Yep. So after the section, after the paragraph, the, the, the header is advice of former one of selectmen. Then there's a, uh, okay. a line in the footnote, the data presented in the majority recommendation. Yep. That's the footnote in question. It's skewed by less. Yeah, it appears on page 13 of mine. Yeah, it's bottom of page 13 on mine. Yeah, it's, it, so, if, you if you download it and print it from Word, it's on 13. It's on, it appears on 14 on the Google Drive, just because of the format. Well, can't we just phrase that in a different oh. way? Uh, picking up on what Mike say, pick different ways. Uh, there is a feeling that, or some of the minority members uh, feel that um, the majority recommendation is skewed, uh, rather than saying that it is skewed. Wait, it could be soft. Part, weren't you part of doing those methods? Yes. Yeah, I think we're making a mountain out of a molehill. The trade here is. Uh, Footnote seven deleted and item four in the majority responses, which calls it false, deleted. Yes. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Yes. I'm good with that. 
Me too. Yep. I'm fine with that. Okay. And I, can I just, Patrick, one speak to Mike for one second, who I can't see on my screen right now, but Mike, I just want to reiterate that there was never an intention to preempt the minority port report with the rebuttal coming first. That was mm -hmm. just simply a matter of cutting and pasting into the master report. Okay, understood. No, this conversation has been very helpful and the spirit in which it's offered on, frankly, both sides is, is helpful. But every once in a while, we just have to flap a bit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so could, could we also get something in under the advice of former one selectmen in the minority report? Um, Harriet, right, it was in the minutes that you guys were going to add that clarification about how that was not in the public data set that people can look at. Oh, okay. Advice of a former Wenham selectman, previous members, um, reported verbally, but not in answer to written surveys. Yeah, I just think it needs to be clarified. It's not yeah, in but it, it's the what data. What I just said, is that clear? Previous, um, I reported verbally to one member of the committee, yep. but not yep. in the public data set, something like that. Right, something outside like that. Of the, outside of the process, the committee yeah. process. No, yeah. don't say that. That's what yeah. you're doing that's so hurtful. Well, okay. it was, it's because you it's did it, but they, they, were, they did not want to be on the record. No, right? no it isn't no. that. It's, okay. I'll give you a precise example. Someone like Tom Tannis absolutely had no interest in, in filling out a survey. I sent it to him. I tried to do it on the phone. No, he said, you know where I stand. I stand yip, yip, yip. And that was that. And that's all he wanted to do. But he felt very strongly we should stay with three. So reported verbally, uh, preferring not to do a, um, a written survey. How is that? Um, yeah, I just think it needs to be clear that the rest of us didn't know about it until we read this. So, because it's I, an I, issue I, of uh, what validation because it's outside the process. Well, it's I couldn't really consider it because I didn't know about it. Uh -huh. You might have earlier on because I, I'm quite certain I mentioned that many months ago. When did you come in? About three months ago. I, uh, I didn't. I never heard over the summer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I well, it doesn't matter. Right. Didn't want to be okay. on record. So the the interview I did with Sean Farrell was verbal, and I took notes, and 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 he has he has since read it. But that was that was not him filling out the survey. That was me asking him questions and 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 um, taking notes of his answers. So that's the same thing with Tom. But I also captured it in a document and put it on the drive so we could all read it. To say, you know, say just I had a conversation with someone and they, this is my personal notes. You know, it's it's information that the rest of the committee just doesn't have. So, to note that that this is it is outside the process because it it was not captured. It was not captured for our, the committee nor the public to to review. <clears throat> Okay, are we done? I, footnote seven is traded off for item four, clear in the new edit and the, and the majority responses to minority come after minority, not before it. That's what I heard. Yes. And then the, the minority is also welcome to uh, submit a, a rebuttal as well. Response to the response. And of course, Patrick, you'll have to then say, and of course the majority reserves the right to respond to the response of the response. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get to town meeting and get this over with. Yes. <laughs> that's, where the, that's where the response to the response will be, Mike. That's exactly right. Um, the mic, on yes. the floor. Yes. Um, and, and watch for uh, a certain sort of grin on Roger's face as he moderates this one. 
I mean that there's, reason, there's, a, there's a reason why I'm abstaining, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Now, Knowing now the background before, that you know. God bless. Before Paul, you came in, I don't think you heard Patrick said that the um 20 uh, 12 uh, report of the government study committee he's going to uh, attach to this report you can find it that's good no, I we have it we found it okay. so Trudy Trudy found the interim report it's it's on Google Drive I printed it up Paul it's excellent I I went to most of those meetings uh, but it raises the whole question which is the topic of the day of what's the appropriate job description or whatever for a town administrator in the town of Wenham. And, and, and that committee was very taken and, and took in data and interviewed people about whether or not you get better candidates if they actually have a defined set of authority. In other words, they say, yep. I can manage up to my, to my bosses, whoever they are, but I at least need to know if I'm responsible for these 10 things, I can make my decision, make the decision of the 10 things and they'll judge me on how good of a job I did. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think that committee felt, and unfortunately many of the people in that committee are no longer in town. Right. Uh, uh, but uh, I think many of us felt that that was one of the reasons we were in favor of putting some set of authority. And I think at the time we talked about oper operating authority because the, the board of selectmen at that time wasn't a whole lot interested in giving up a lot of power Right. Um, but uh, but at the same time, having a town administrator inherently made this muddy water all the time. And so yep. in my view, and I think in the committee's view at the time, giving a discrete set of authority to the to the office of the TA, you know, makes it easier. Hold somebody responsible for operating the town. The selectmen can say what the goals for the year's operations are. <laughs> and then you either. Uh, praise and raise the <laughs> town administrator, you fire him because he's not doing what you want. And you can keep as much or as little authority as you want. But I, I think that uh, I feel obviously very strongly that that should happen. I felt that way then. I think that's the way now. And in my view, uh, the, uh, the arguments in favor of five work best uh, if, if they're coupled with some level of, of operating authority going into the office so that the selectmen can look beyond whether or not we close town hall at three o'clock. Right. And can we come back to this when we get to the additional observations? Because this is part of that. Uh, if we're done discussing the recommendation sections, uh, can we just talk about placement and content of the executive summary uh, so that I know what, if any, changes? <laughs> <laughs> and then we can get to the additional observations. Executive <clears throat> summary. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Kirsten, you had said that you thought the executive summary should come before the introduction. And yeah. the reason why I had placed it after the introduction was because. Putting it before the introduction places it out of context. That was my thinking. Um, well, first of all, I think the introduction is super dry. And, <laughs> and also, it was unclear to me, just reading it, is the background and methodology part of the executive summary? Or is that going into the report? So just from a slow point of view, it was confusing. Like, is this one paragraph the entire executive summary, or is there several pages of executive well, summary? You know, it's just the first, there. it's the first draft. And obviously, from our yeah. conversation, now it's going to be three, four, five paragraphs long with more substantive uh, content, right? So, I guess the next, the next who, draft, who, who is who is drafting those portions of the executive summary, and when are we going to? The if, folks who have produced this. Well, I'm, so just, I'm thinking this out. If we're trying to get, if we're trying to deliver, Patrick, is is the 18th when we're delivering this to the select board, or is the 18th when we are voting to approve our final report? 
the 18th is the um, the date we are to present to the select board as of now. So, so we need to have final, voted to approve final report before then. Which would be the 12th. Which means all revisions, including expansion of the executive summary, have to be submitted before the 12th. Do we... Do we need to really expand the executive summary? One thing I will put in here. I is, don't think so, but. Yeah, I, the one thing that, that, that is missing from here, just uh, that the majority is four. It's just the, um, the number is missing. It, it, it says that the. Okay. Uh, a majority of the committee, uh, and then it says two are minority. So it should say four in majority. And I would also note one, one abstaining member. And identify each of them. That, yeah, uh, uh, no problem there. Or and then also down later yeah. in the report. I think that can just be down later in the report. This yeah, is I don't think to that be needs short, to exactly. short and sweet. Just add right. a sentence. One that's abstained. Fine. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Um, I, I think in the executive summary, I would just add a little bit more about um, this report includes background and methodology of data collection. You know, just like sort of what's in the report, okay, and um, and also looks at some of the issues that were identified um, for the future. So the additional observations, and you know, including financial implications. You know, just so people know. So I don't think it's like a lot that's gonna additional that goes in here, but if you're just skimming and not reading anything else, you kind of go, oh, well, that's interesting. Let me flip to that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we had talked about Kirsten would do the final edit of this because she's an editor. So I just want to make sure yeah. we're accounting for that time in our timeline. Right, so that that's part of my concern because if, if we're still having Drafting in the recommendations and responses, time for me to bring that revised structure together along with any changes to the executive summary, any drops or revisions to the additional observations, and then a final proofread by Kirsten. That's what's going to happen be before one more meeting. Yeah, but maybe... Maybe yeah, it can, can just be handed to Kirsten after tonight. And if there, if the minority group decides to write a rebuttal, she can also just drop it in. I don't know, Kirsten, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Should any consideration be given to asking or scheduling with whoever's scheduling in town hall uh, that we get the 25th instead of the 18th and, and give ourselves a little more time to go back and forth on these drafts and and nail them in another Zoom of our own. So they they meet biweekly. Um, okay. So they may not they may not have a twenty fifth meeting. Um, in which case we're right up against the nominal warrant deadline of what Feb four. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess we have to squeeze it all in in the next two uh, days. I'm I'm fine turning the work product over to Kirsten at this point. Um, if Kirsten, if um, if you've gotten down the notes on all the various weeks that have been discussed so far, um, I, I'm I'm fine handing it over. I've got those notes. If uh, if not, but what I would say is uh, work from the Word, <laughs> download the Word document, yes. Word document, because <laughs> the formatting on Google Drive just or Google Docs, whatever it's called. Yep. It does not yeah. play, play nicely with Microsoft. And we so, just want to be absolutely clear before we touch uh, recommendations, the minority is fine with removing that footnote. Correct? Yes. Yes. And the majority is fine with removing point four. Yes. Eliminating yes. four. Yes. Eliminate, yes. Yep. Good. And so then and the other... The other and the location. Three. Sorry, Roger. Yep. Uh, I think you and I are about other, to say the same thing. Yep. The other issue is location, right? It will yes. go. 
Those other yeah. three points will go down as a response. And Mike, you and Harriet can prepare a response as well. Yeah, uh, that's an option we can exercise if we wish to. Yeah. So and we structure time frame. The time frame for all of this, Roger, in your mind is what? People's inputs of various kinds. It would to have to be Kirsten. in time so that Kirsten can add it to the master document and upload the master document in advance of the meet our meeting next Wednesday. So, so basically Tuesday or Wednesday morning, whatever, Tuesday. I'm, I'm not going to speak for Kirsten's schedule. What's good for you, Kirsten? Um, in terms of getting your stuff? Any, or... any additional edits by anyone from any direction? So what I would recommend is that I make all the revisions and then send it out to every if you have additional new stuff send it as soon as possible yep and then um if and then also i'll have it up there so people can make can review it yep so it's part of the process day. not not just yeah. Odd, yeah odd things coming in from different directions right right well it all has to go to patrick anyway exactly and then, At the end of the day, it has to go to the Pope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then I suspect we'll, there may be some live editing that we need to do on Wednesday just to get right. final wrinkles ironed out. And then on Wednesday, we vote to approve the report. Yes. Yes. And, and Kirsten, just uh, I might... Um, I just want to add on editing and defer to your pro uh, pro at this, but uh, even though I'm known uh, uh, as one page Mike, I would really encourage us to make uh, clean break pages on where we start a whole new section, even at the risk of consuming one or two more trees to produce this report. Mm -hmm. So it's crisp and clear and follows because it's a fair amount uh, for the you know a, a basic resident trying to read into this, it's a fair amount to comprehend. And if it's laid out uh, as clearly and cleanly with space and focus, anyway, enough said. You know what to do. Yeah, um, it would be helpful to have the exact language on Harriet from you on the advice of former Wenham Selectman okay. about about sure. how that was reported. Um, yeah, I'll do that for you. Great. Can, um, can we move? Are we ready to move on to the, the addenda? Uh, I think additional observations first, Patrick. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, so here, um, under elections, um, uh, here. So this would actually be point number two would actually be three separate elections because you have the incumbent seat and then the two new seats. So you would have three races uh, on the one ballot. This was just for, f for filling the two new seats. Okay. Oh. I if you want to add a footnote that on that same ballot would also be a another election for the extant seat then uh, it's fine I, I do see where it says the additional seat so I, um yeah maybe just a sentence it says on this ballot there would be three three seats um, for for clarity so we're not making a recommendation one way or the other? I don't think it was in our charge to do so. Okay. I do think when we go before the select board, could potentially ask or we could potentially offer um, 
our thoughts or individuals' thoughts. Did we have any data responses from people? I know we asked them if they would run. Did we, was there anything along these lines that would be helpful? Probably not. On the election format? Right. In particular, if a candidate is looking at running for a year versus running for three years or not knowing whether they're running for one, two, or three years when they run, that's a pretty big difference in someone's life. The, the I, only I, thing, Kirsten, on that front was that one of the people I interviewed that was a Groveland Select Board member reflected anecdotally to me that they used the single ballot winner gets three runner up gets two and it was suboptimal in his view and i talked to someone i can't remember who it was and they basically said the same thing they would not do the rank choice they they would do individual races i i can't remember who it was i talked to though but it was it was not a question on any of the surveys So do we want to put any point in about that? That the, maybe that the, the challenge of single ranked result election would be uncertainty for a candidate or is that just obvious? I don't think it's obvious, but I, I don't know how, how much deeper we're going to get into this um, on this document. Okay. Oh, um, and here, the because we've located the prior government study committee report, maybe just um, where it says that uh, we couldn't locate it, just that we've located the interim report of that committee. And it's, a, it's attached here. Do we know for sure there was a final report? It went to town meeting. As, as I remember, the only part of that report that made it to town meeting was voting on whether the town clerk should be elected or appointed. Yeah, but that wasn't the report. But th that was the result of the report. So I, I, I think there was, yeah. no, there was a result. I had, I had a communication, sorry to interrupt. I had a communication with Eric Lustig um, and it's anecdotal, but obviously he was a prominent member of this committee he said that uh geez i want to bring it up because now i'm acting outside of scope here but uh you'll forgive me basically and maybe this will jog some recollections they got to an interim they never got to a final because the composition of the board changed and the focus moved on and there just wasn't an appetite to round out the work that's my words not his but that's the sense that i got is that refresh any recollections or should I pull up his email? No, I agree with that. So the interim report was the last report that was- Was the last report produced, but it, I got the sense from him that there wasn't, there was neither a final nor necessarily an agreed upon best thought at the end. There was good thoughts, but it didn't sound like the, like the, the committee concluded its work. <laughs> through no fault of its own. So maybe just that, uh, that sentence can be changed. All right, I, he said, and I, I think he'd be okay if I, sh I mean, this is, I was acting on the committee. I think the political makeup of the board of selectmen changed and there wasn't any interest in our continuing. I have a slightly different view of it, but I had conversations with the selectmen, but the effectiveness was correct. There was a board of three people chaired by Molly Martins, poor Harriet remembers that, um, which was pretty progressive by Wenham standards. And, and th this committee was appointed or was in effect under that board. And then the next set of elections, there was a change with, uh, the, and then over a sequence of years, all of those people left the board. The three, the three, if you will, progressives who were there, 
um, and and then you know and, and a different sentiment transpired after that, and and I had specifically worked hard, frankly, lobbying Jack Wilhelm <laughs> was one of those change people um, uh, without success. Uh, one of many things I didn't have success <laughs> changing Jack's mind on. Um, so I think uh, I don't I don't specifically remember the details of ending with a whimper instead of a bang, but <laughs> but it was pretty clear that there was no interest in going forward with the warrant, uh, a warrant article, which the committee would have recommended to empower, specifically empower the Office of Town Administrator with operational authority. May still not be true. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I don't think it, I, I'll read this last thing and this is all I have. We had just had some snippets. My best recollection, which might differ from Paul's, is that we made an interim, I made actually, he says, an interim presentation in annual town meeting. There were some changes on the board and ultimately with the TA and the impetus for our work dried up. I don't think that's inconsistent with what Paul just said, so. Patrick, could you just clarify where the report is in our folders? Sure, I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, didn't want to spend a lot of time looking, but I couldn't find it. Yep, so it's this, um, do you see my page with all the, um, the different pages on it? Ah, it's under the report sections. Okay, gotcha. And just to be clear, he didn't have a copy of it. He couldn't locate it either, so I'm not holding that <laughs> on you, folks. Join the club. Trudy found yeah. it. Trudy, Trudy, I, think, I think it was actually a paper copy that Dave Reed had that, that Trudy was able to get her hands on. So this is an actual scanned copy. It was at the bottom of his stack by the side of the bed when he really had bad, you know, could, couldn't go to sleep and he needed something. Just it was the, <laughs> the silver bullet at 4.30 in the morning, you know. It didn't work because it, it's very uh, thought provoking. No, it's a well done report. Um, yeah, and, and I, I just want to say, Paul, I didn't mean there was no slight. I, those were my words, not Eric's in terms of no, no, it, no, no. It ending. Yeah, no, I mean, I have huge respect for Eric. And, uh, you know, he was he was wonderful and was sort of pushed into leadership on that committee. And, uh, no, he's he's a he's a good man. And uh, if he's still in town, <laughs> we should get him back into town government. <laughs> I think uh, Anne's doing everything for, for that household right now. She's she's assumed the mantle. They're still here. They're on. Uh, yeah, they're here. But I don't think anybody else really is. Martin Pomeroy has gone. Judy okay. LeBlanc is gone. Yeah. Um, was Ken on there? I think Ken was on there. Ken. Yes, Ken. But he's faded. Well, I think he's on the Conservation Commission now. I think that makes sense. Yeah. But so, I mean, he, he's another person who might have recollection. I, I think it's old history now. We're either going to, uh, you know, pick up that line of thought at this point as a result of the work of this committee um, or we're not. And it's, it's difficult to see with the attrition at town hall, how we can actually do anything for a while. <laughs> well, we'll have to get an interim of some sort. Yeah. If we're going to have town meeting, if the warrant's going to be closed in a month or so, timing is dreadful. Yeah. Hello, Tom Younger. <laughs> Who knows what he's up to? Is any, uh, Patrick, have you heard from him at all? I heard from him today. Yes, uh, he, he's very interested in the work that this committee is doing. Um, Sorry? He, he, uh, he reached out to me today. Uh, he's very interested in the work that we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And he is aware of our situation, but he has um, is not been contacted. I don't believe by the select board at this point. Mm -hmm. But he is aware and he is available. Um, well, that would be relatively seamless and cover us through ATM anyway. Yes. Uh, so I propose that I, I, I move some of these um, documents out of this folder, and we use this folder for only pieces that are going to be part of the final report. So 
second second that motion that's a great <laughs> idea so the majority recommendation is already in here so i'm going to move this to drafts if we're okay yep. with that yep oh kirsten <laughs> you're muted uh which document should i be working from the uh, the TS, uh, TGSC final report shell with today's date on it. Lower lower left there, right? Yeah, we just have other documents okay. that are that aren't going to be included, that are either already included or will not be included. Um, okay. So we and I'm just I'm just going to move them to the drafts folder. So they're, they're still here. It just makes it a little easier to, um, to see. Uh, this list of um, the resources is incomplete. So I'd like I'd like to remove that as well, if we're okay with that. Yep. Are we done with comments? Um, um no. Okay. <laughs> we just had one more. Know. We just did the election formats, but not financial implications. Okay. And role was, of the town administrator and role of the select board and closing remarks. Hey, hey, Patrick, could could we maybe um, do the moving of files Later. after the meeting? I'm looking at the clock and. Yep, absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, back to the report. Um, These additional observations would be in the form of an appendix A or something? As or is currently it... structured, it's part, it's part of the report. Part of the report, fine. And uh, but it would be pre presumably a fresh page start. It'll, it'll be clearly delineated, then, like a know, big uh, line between the report right, uh, right. response. Yeah. Election formats might be number one, the other two, two, three, so that anybody from town meeting four wants to ask a question about it, they can say, in, you know, item four on page 16, you say blah, blah. Anyway, you'll do the editing. Okay, so to comments on financial implications? Yeah, I have some. Um, I just think that there, there's like two whole paragraphs on this benefits issue, and I, I'm not sure where it ended up um, with Ryan confirming, but it just seems weird to talk about recodifying something that we did discover was codified. So I kind of feel like this whole section could be condensed um, to just say, you know, we discovered this issue. However, we also learned that this was approved and codified at a select board meeting and whatever, whatever. Um, and to ensure that it stays permanent, this additional step could be taken, like something much simpler. Yep, I agree with that. Likewise. Is that edit, uh, going to fall to Kirsten? Yeah, I think she can handle it. <laughs> uh, yeah, at this point, all. All, all, all Kirsten's grace, graciously volunteered to take over the editing pen from me. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I think that makes sense to, um, to cut did, that one down. Did we get a final answer? Or this that was, was the final that was the, yeah so that was the thing that and that's why i had <clears throat> written it as this i don't think we got a final answer on whether some action had been taken by a subsequent board to uh reverse that policy right so do we want to say something like that the current select board i mean we could say this in our meeting they might want to just make it a policy now so it's 
clear and we don't have to go backwards, right? Let, let me just say that this issue never came up when I was active in, in town government. I first heard of it from Patrick. Um, and from my point of view, it's, it's well, one, it, it's simply, it's easily fixable. Um, and apparently it was fixed in a way that I think is valid. Um, I, I, I so, and one, and two, I know, I, I, I know that the selectmen are very concerned about the financial consequences. So I think it behooved the arguments for five that there's a way to ensure that there's not a financial explosion. You know, we're, we're facing some very tough tax limit things going forward. And I think it, it'll strengthen the, the recommendation or, or set, remove a, a distraction that needn't be there, which says in effect, um, you know, fix the compensation either with con compensation or not, but specifically exclude rights to benefits and those sorts of things. Um, so I, I think you, it might be helpful to the board if, you know, we sort of say this is, this is a manageable thing, confirm with town council, you know, and if you need to do something, do it. But I think this board is, is not going to want to go forward with this without closing this door uh, financially. Kirsten, you got that one? I think so. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and in this one, the role of the town administrator, um, this can also be simplified just to reference the document that's going to be attached. What document is that, Patrick? The government study committee from 2012. We can just make that um, an addendum to the report. I mean, I just think we need to provide a little bit of context of why we're uh, attaching that document. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of this says, uh, you know, that we're, um, we only know this through Paul Weaver, but now we actually have a copy. So that can just be kind of um, condensed <laughs> down. Yeah, it, it is an issue. Um, we looked at it and we found a copy of the report and it's attached for your review perusal yeah because going deep into this issue is outside of our purview and it had already been covered by a prior committee something like that yes i think it also feeds into the next uh the role of the select board as well the the, the Again, they're, they're tied together. Could you shoot me a copy of the 2012 Town Government Study Committee interim report, period? My ineptitude with Google Docs makes it unlikely that I will find it, comma, and it probably behooves me to review it. Uh, and get up to snuff to the because well, this will come. You're, you're unmuted. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, like, are you talking to us? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. I, you, you, you didn't say anything untoward, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, I know what I said. <laughs> I, I was, I was begging help since uh, Harriet had said she'd taken down the report. I said, "Shit, I need to get my homework done and reread this report from 2012." I've been talking. Uh, you know, outside the portfolio, and I, I it should behoove me to read it <laughs> and, and uh, disavow it or, or reconfirm it as appropriate. I, I, can shoot, I can shoot you off a copy. That'd be great. I, I as I say, I, I plead incompetence with Google Docs. <laughs> this is my rationale for asking for spoon fed help. Oh, all good. Anything else we need to change here? Very nice at the end. So what happens next, Patrick? 
Uh, our next meeting is the 12th. Hopefully we have a uh, report that we can all say, yep, that's good. Let's submit it. Um, I have talked to Catherine Harrison and uh, she's willing to put us on the 18th agenda. Um, and again, because we're not um, of unanimous view, I, I, I think everyone should attend and, and um, be willing and prepared to, to speak to their, their uh, point of view. Um, Cause I don't, I don't think it should be just, you know, I, I can definitely present and present uh, both sides, but I, um, Listen, for those in nope. the minority, I, I think you should, should probably attend and just to, to clarify your points. Just a note, Patrick, um, if there is an intention to have quorum of the committee, president will have to notice that a public meeting of this committee as well. Yes. Just either. Yeah, and it's a it's a Zoom, Patrick. Yes, yes, it is. Yep. Yeah. So you 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 do the intro, the the circus leader, and uh, you or somebody you designate would speak to the summarized majority, and either uh, Harriet or I would speak to the minority in brief. You know, that would short, be the whole yes. short, short and sweet, and see what they questions they have, right? Yes. Right. Yep. And I can I can run that by uh, by Catherine um, in the next couple of days. You bet. And then let's assume that they say, "Well done, gang." And uh, yeah, it sounds like it's worth process. We'll get back to you on what we want to do. Then we yeah. we wait and we hear uh, a little while later, right? A few weeks later or whatever. Although the Warren article deadline comes into play here. Yeah, it's not like I, the, I selectmen, would... the selectmen can't just sit on this and uh, trying to figure out what they want to do. They have to act uh, to endorse or not, right? Yeah, the, the hope would be that they would, uh, and I, I can ask if, uh, if they would be willing to take a vote whether or not to proceed to the warrant. Because if they decline going to the warrant, you want to leave enough time for a citizen's petition to get it on there anyway. Yep. Somehow or other, I can't see them barring uh, the town from speaking to this matter. I, I can't either, but um, you never know. But you never know. <laughs> <laughs> You've done this before, Patrick. A couple times. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, you might say that situation. Go ahead. I was just going to say, we might say that stranger things have happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in situations like this where, you know, things rise up with some support for them, in this case, there's a careful report. I've always advised the selectmen to put it on there. You can always recommend against passage, but it, at this point in time, it's preceded. It's, it's on the public docket and uh, to force, you know, the proponents of this, having gotten a vote in October of last year, whatever it was, uh, you know, to, to look into this issue, it seems to me they need to uh, enable action on it as they see, see fit, um, but not not to sort of slam the door because it's, it is a good faith effort for right. sure. And to steal a line from earlier today, the Wenham selectmen do not want to be seen as someone holding a dagger to the throat of Wenham democracy. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, just a question are we including the um proposed warrant item in the report or as a attachment i think it should be an attachment okay so i just want Here, to Kirsten. say in the executive summary at least like what the attachments are or or, or you could have a schedule of uh attachments that's, um, that's okay. They're doing it, but and do we have that finalized? That list of what the attachments are. I think we can go right to this folder. Um, um, and it would be the list, the complete list of pros and cons that we've collected. 
the FAQ, um, the KP warrant article. I would actually put that one probably first. Yeah. Uh, and then um, the charge. The ch oh, the charge should probably be first. Um, and then KP. Um, the complete list of pros and cons, the FAQ, and then the two thousand oh the uh, the stipends, and then the two thousand twelve report because I think the financial implications come before the two thousand twelve report and the um, additional comments. Okay, so what would be helpful for me is if they are all in one document. Um, for organizing and reference purposes. And also, so it's just one PDF that anyone can print out and not be looking for six different documents. Are they formatted in a way where that's possible? Probably even not. If it's, okay. Even if it's a sideways page, that would be okay. I, don't I think ul are. ultimately it should just be one document that that we hand off. Yes. I think you might have to drop them in in order and make sure the fonts are matched and all that stuff. Yeah, I can do that. So it's just the documents in this folder that you okay. see now. Okay. And have we gone through all of these? I can't remember, I know we've gone through some of them, but have we gone through all of them and we're all good with them? Or do we want to focus on that a little more next week? Uh, I would suggest if we want to do that review, we do it now because next week is going to be a hopefully final vote. Yeah. So if we can just take a quick pass through them, Patrick. Sure. So a complete list of pros and cons. This is from the key informant. So this would be um, from the boards and committees. Correct, Deirdre? Um, that's from, yeah. Sorry, scroll down. There's two There's two different ones. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So yep. the second one's the board's committees. The first one's the um, select board Six. members. We could, probably can specify that. Select board members, TAs. So you put that in parentheses at the end, maybe? Yeah, sure. Yeah. TAs okay. and the other town representatives, the Groveland and Hamilton interviews. Yeah. But they are all select board and... Um, yeah, right. So one of them TAs and then select board. All right. Um, so these are just taken straight from the documents. Um, we have gone through them before. Um, everyone okay with these? Yep. Yep. Good. That's that. um, the FAQ, this is the one that I did. Um, Do we need it? Because a lot of a lot of this is um, discussed in the document itself. I personally don't think we need it. It was for the 
purpose of uh, facilitating discussion at one of the public hearings. It'll be on in the research folder, but I'm not sure. I, I think it just adds pages to the to the document we're delivering. Yeah, that's true. So we'll take this one out. Actually, I, I, please don't take it out yet. There's some nice, clear language in here that might be useful. You just put a note at the top if you want. But I think like this, the, the um, salary part is actually really valuable for someone looking at this. Oh, we have that, that information be uh, ported over to the stipend uh, appendix. It, it's there. It's, it's there. there. It's okay. there. Uh, all these all these towns are included. So that's why I say this this document isn't really that important. Okay. Close that. Um, so here here are the stipends. I'm going to go here next. So this is all of Essex County. So that's uh, it's a more comprehensive list than it's in the FAQ. So could the wording from the FAQ maybe go on to this document? Sure. Give a little explanation. Oh, for that item, yeah. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Do that. Um, and then the KP Warren article. Red line. Oh, can we get a? Are we intending to attach the red line, or are we going to get a clean? Uh, I I can accept changes. I think I can accept changes. I may I may have to take it out of um, Google Docs and just accept the changes. So this should have a little header. And just say that it was reviewed by or written by or you know prepared by. by prepared by Lauren Goldberg that the committee reviewed that Lauren then made additional changes something like that. Okay. So I'll um, I'll take this not right now I'll take it out put it in Word accept the changes and then put it back in with the header. Okay. Okay. And the charge is the charge. Nothing really to do there. Aren't we the three to five subcommittee? Or is that? <coughs> we are. And I would just um, add in, even though the logo is there, I would still say Wenham Town Government Study Committee. I think this was a document that was prepared by the administration okay. on behalf of the select board. So I don't think we should make any changes to this. Okay. Topic. All right, great. Uh, and that's it. Oh, we're in the town government study committee from 2012. Right. Discussion draft. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> yeah, I did a little poking around and it was presented to the select board and then disappeared into the ether after that. But there was an interview in the local paper about it at one point. And there was some talk about it at town meeting that year. We, we did vote on um, whether the town clerk should be elected or appointed. That's the only, that's right. the only piece of this that made it to the floor of town meeting. Or we can just include this in its entirety. Um, Great. Anything else? I, I want to pose a question maybe for discussion next time. It occurs to me, just occurred to me as we're sitting here, uh, that uh, we may get questions uh, about our the, the committee's views, pro and con, uh, on the change uh, based on the, what would be the best possible beta test, which was Hamilton, because Hamilton did move from a three uh, and, a, and, a, and a secretary to a town manager and five. Um, and so, it, it, in, in, shall we say, 
it might be interesting to contemplate and sort of formulate the arguments on both sides, frankly, uh, about the ways in which either that made things that made Hamilton a better managed town, or or perhaps they're still the same. I've always had this condescending view about Hamilton myself, being a Wenham guy the whole time. But uh, mm -hmm. it, it seems to me, uh, particularly for the majority, it might be useful to be able to point to some distinct benefits that happened there because they're the closest thing to us there is, uh, besides us. <laughs> so anyway, we can. No. It's, it's, it, 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 it's an interesting subject, and I wouldn't be surprised that somebody will ask uh, ask about that, and so it might be useful to have thoughts about it. Isn't that reflected in the data that we collected, though? Uh, I, I'm not, well, I'd have to refer back to Deirdre on the data. If the data says that the following people said Hamilton's better managed since five, then yeah, it's in the data, but I, I don't recall having seen it that way, but I have not been the best student of the data either. I, I, from my recollection, it was a mixed, I mean, the, the person you spoke to thought it was better before, but he wasn't on the board during the change. It was observational. And the other person felt it was um, positive. I was really thinking about it from Wenham's perspective. I mean, the, the question is, is that a better model for us? We look across the border and maybe you say, well, Hamilton's incorrigible no matter what. Uh, but but if, if you think, look how much better Hamilton is for having made these changes, I'm, I'm personally in favor of, I don't know, it's a town manager, town administrator, but getting that office uh, invested with authority uh, so that it can do things because that opens up all the benefits that, that the five member board might offer. Um, so, um, you, you, you see, you saw both those changes made there. And if it, if the argument can be made, it seems to me it's a per pervasive one that see things are better because, um, I, and I, I haven't, I haven't thought about this before and I don't, I don't know, I don't have an answer one way or the other. And in particular, uh, you know, been gone for five years and, and certainly haven't paid any attention at all to Hamilton. <laughs> um, I, I have, do have one thought on that, which is that because we have different forms of government, different structures, I guess, um, it is harder to collaborate between the two and um, doing some joint things. That That's what I've observed in, mm. in trying to do some joint things between them. And that was the feedback from both towns is that it's going to be trickier for us to do that as a joint thing, um, thinking particularly the human rights uh, commission and committee uh, each town developed initially there was thought of doing them jointly and um, that was made much more difficult because there are different types of structure but it may be worthwhile to have conversations with people on boards and committees and see what their thoughts are in in hamilton um, I, I do know that they, the select board members tend to liaise more with uh, boards and committees in Hamilton than we do in Wenham. Positive or negative, I, I'm not sure, but um, I know they do. One of their select board members sits on the CPC. Um, so informal, informal conversations can, uh, inform us for before the meeting. Uh, <coughs> Harry, do you need some soup delivered or cough drops or anything? <laughs> no, let me know, because there's going to be a snowstorm tonight. So mm -hmm. I, I'm well stocked if you need anything. Are you? Mm. Well, it's, it's a Canadian virus. So what can I say? I don't know if it will respond to anything locally. <laughs> Okay, uh, as we approach nine o'clock, um, so I'm going to revise the agenda for our 112 meeting. We're going to we're going to ditch the public forum um, and go to a final vote, which we will then put in the final document. Hopefully, the document mm -hmm. is final, so we'll just put names and dates in there. Uh, we'll vote on acceptance of the final report to be presented. Um, 
I will reach out to Catherine again and uh, just firm up the 18th as our presentation. And we can also talk about presentation format, um, what's acceptable to the select board and what roles we can have here. Uh, anything else you wanna see, anyone wants to see on the next agenda? Um, whatever we might glean from Catherine or others uh, on the pathway from the 18th to ATM, what events come, you know, after the 18th? When we can expect to hear up or down, whether it's going to go to um, a Warren article. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. And then in terms of getting the word out to people in the town that this is happening, do we want to do anything around that or do we leave that to the select board? How does that work? Yeah, the select board needs to hammer away at it every time one of them is near a microphone. Right? Talk it up. People get interested. I mean, we had a front page of the newspaper story that I think that reporter would be interested in covering it again um, at some yep. point. I just did talk with uh, Neil Zolot um, this week, earlier this week. Uh, and he, I suggested to him that he, he attend the select board meeting on the 18th, um, but we may want something before that. Uh, I can, I can talk to Michelle and see if we can get the website updated, the town website updated. Um, And town Facebook would be good, but I don't know if anyone is 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 manning that these days. Mm -hmm. Well, sounds like a plan. I apologize, but I've got to run. Yeah, um, likewise. But uh, yeah, good work, group, and uh, I commend everybody for the compromises made, and uh, we'll. Uh, See you on the 12th. Motion to adjourn. Is second. There a second? <laughs> Kirsten. Hey. Deirdre. Hi. Harriet. Yes. Dave. Hi. Roger. Yes. Mike. Yes. I'm an I as well. Thank you all very much. And we'll see you on the 12th. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.